way, uh, comes to one of these seminars, walks away with a great deal of knowledge. And no matter what your field, uh, we have people here today from many different martial arts. We have people here from uh, Shotokan, people here from uh, Kempo, people from Taekwondo, Tongsudo, uh, Kwan Lee Kong. So we've got a, a nice variety. And uh, hopefully, uh, you're going to be learning, uh, of course, from Mr. Miller, but you'll learn a lot by working with each other, too. So uh, I really look forward to uh, working with some of you throughout the course of the day. And at this point, I'd like to introduce Mr. Bruce Miller. Give him a nice hand, please. Everybody knows who I am. I'm Bruce Miller. And this is going to be a second level course on advanced fighting techniques. Now, what do I mean by advanced fighting techniques level two? I did have a level one tape out there, and I do not mean to put that down at all. But quite frankly, that was a beginning course. It had a lot of theory in it, it was very good theory, and it all worked. Um, had a lot of good feedback on it. But it didn't really show you a lot of ways in some areas on how to take it from the beginning level, how to close it, and actually take somebody to the ground. Now, along with a lot of other information, that's exactly what we're going to show today. To show you how to take your opponent and bring him to the ground. Now, I'm supposing that you already have the knowledge of level one. That you know what things to look for, when to initiate your attack, how to force your opponent into doing the attack, and the setups and how you should be standing. So I'm not going to be repeating that stuff. Um, I may gloss over some superficial points of it, but I don't want to waste your time or your money repeating stuff that you've already gotten out of the first level course. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, one of the hardest things, and I mean at least in terms of safely, is to take your opponent out when he's um, intend on doing your harm in such a way that you don't get yourself wiped out. Now, anybody who's been in the field of martial arts while is generally pretty confident in their sparring ability, but initiating the attack and getting into them to the point where you're actually controlling them, that closing the distance is one of the hardest things to do. And then, once you're in there, how do you control it safely? Now, there's a lot of techniques you can do, especially when you're in close. But I want to make sure that everybody understands that what I'm going to be teaching today is designed to teach you how to handle an opponent quickly, fast, and still be viable to other people out there. What I mean is basically Miller's third law, which is that jerks have got friends. If you tie yourself up too long with one opponent, the other opponent's going to get you. Now, as I showed in, in uh, level one advanced fighting techniques, there are techniques that you can use to uh, spar multiple people. And all of those techniques require that you become pretty pro proficient at taking somebody out quickly and efficiently. If you spend too much time on that one person, his buddy, i.e. the other jerk, is going to come in behind you and nail you. And it doesn't do you much good to take him out if two of the other three people jump on you and knock you out, or worse. So, what we're going to do is that. Before I even get started, however, I do need to answer some questions on the difference between pressure points and poison hands. Um, we talked about pressure points, we talked about poison hands in the first tape, and we talked about them in the books. In fact, I'm not going to repeat what I've said in the other books, because so you do need my pressure points and poison hands books and tapes to get into it. But if I get, can I get you to come here a second? All right. Take a, take a good fighting stance. All right, why don't you turn on the camera? Now, you can attack pressure points and poison hands, but there's been people who said, well, I have attacked a point and nothing's happened. And they're absolutely correct. You can attack, if you tighten up your arm, take the pressure point, and you tighten up the muscles really, really tight, there's nothing you can do. You can strike them, you can do the same with the leg, you can kick really hard, and you cannot cause a reaction. Why is that? Because the muscle gets hard enough to prevent penetration. Now, this is a pretty obvious thing, but people really never thought of the implications. So if you can't get into them, if you can't do any penetration, not only can you not do a muscle attack, in a lot of cases you may not be able to do a nerve attack, and you can't do a poison hands attack because you can't get to the Golgi tendon apparatus. However, however, anatomically there's still nerves that cannot be protected, especially the axial nerve and the femoral nerve, and 
even more important. When you tighten your muscles really tight, you also take and you also put tension on the ligaments and the tendons. And we do that, you just see, all right, just see that they get tight. It becomes real easy to start rolling those things. In fact, the tighter he gets, the easier it is to pause, cause a reaction. Again, tight, tighten your legs. Okay? Roll back. You can just see the tighter he gets, the more of the reaction. It takes very ounces of pressure and I can cause that reaction. If he's loose on that hand, loosen up your legs. And I try to do that, and nothing happens. He rolls his leg and nothing happens at all because there's no tension on it. So you need to learn how to judge your opponent. If he's in a style that teaches him really hard stance, don't be trying to do a pressure point or a poison hands to a muscle tank. Or don't try and get into, you know, reach out and grab and break your radio else and try to do it. Because you're not going to do anything. All you're going to do is come across and just beat you up. On the other hand, if you do something, come here and you catch a tendon or a ligament point, you automatically own it. Why? Again, because there's everything you do, everything you do causes a secondary reaction. It's kind of like a chess game. You move your piece in this direction, it exposes something else. So you have to have the give and take. And that's exactly what I wanted to talk. Um, the other thing I want to make very clear is that regardless of muscle tension, reflex points always work. Now you can guard the um, gastric flexes with a lot of tension. You really can't guard the pelvic flexes. You absolutely cannot guard the throat flexes or any of the other reflexes. Now you heard the cough. That's your strength. Now, tighten up your left heart. Real tight. And you can still see the reaction. Just one finger. All right, even when he's tight. So I'm trying to tell you that reflex points, the level 7 reflex pressure points, always work. And you can always accelerate or escalate to that level. So it doesn't matter. If you get inside and you do a, 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 a reflex point, the guy is gone. And I don't care if he's high on drugs or what the heck the story is. You accelerate to a, a reflex point. He's out of the picture. Okay? All right. Now, with that said, I want to move on to the actual meat of the subject of this tape which is learning how to close. Now, i got to teach you a bunch of techniques that are going to first seem like they're kind of um, independent of each other. But after we get about three of these things down, I'm going to show you how they all fit together. And when they all fit together, you're going to find out that you've got a very good system for closing and controlling your opponent in a very quick and fashion way. Now, that said, I want to go on to one point. In Quan Le Khan, we always teach somebody that the best thing you can do when they grab you is to grab him. Come on, just put your hand like a punch. If I grab him here, the best thing he could absolutely do would be to grab my hand. Because as soon as he has my hand, of course, then he owns me. All right? And the thing that really locks me in trouble at this point, if you notice, is my thumb. I cannot get my hand out here. Because, again, my thumb's not out there. I can just roll, roll out. And this is the whole premise of what we teach, which is re reverse chin up. As soon as I lock my thumb in here, he goes for it. The best thing he can do is lock my thumb, roll over, and he owns me. And there's just nothing I can do at this point. But if I didn't have my thumb there, try the same move, and I'm out. So, you have a situation where you don't have advantage of having your thumb there. You actually have a disadvantage. But yet, at different points, you're going to find that you're having your thumb there is essential to control your form. So how do we really resolve it? Well, the first thing we do is we teach something called basically a crane capture. All right, I want you to just punch me. And what we do is we capture. The thumb comes in and just basically a crane capture. Now, I want you to notice that we capture from the inside out. There's a lot of techniques that teach people to block from outside in, and they're not wrong. But reflexly, it's slightly faster and a lot slightly safer to block from inside out. And after we get that, the second thing we do is a separate crane and bring it in from the outside back in. Now, at this point, we start using the, we talked in the other tape of pressure points, what we call pain withdrawal reflex. And we said a level three is when you basically cross the body in such a way that it will also change the balance. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. First, we're going to block a crane out. We're going to block crane in. But at this point, we're going to change over and use our thumb and then pull them across the body. Now, I see what happens to his balance when I do that. He absolutely loses his balance. Now, the trick is, is to pull across the body, and not over here, but also down. All right, it doesn't take much pressure. Go ahead and pull punch. One, two, three. And now I own him. Okay? And actually, this technique seems extremely simple. But yet, it's absolutely crucial to have the angles and the speed down. So it's crane. You can, I prefer a crane, which 
but you can use your thumb at this point. Now, we're going to go around, and I want everybody to master this, and I mean absolutely implicitly master this concept of the angle. And then we're going to move on, because when you have this, it sets up half the fight. This is a good, well, I'll say 30% of the fight. Okay? So, want everybody up? We're going to work on that. Please, do not try and muscle these things. It just takes ounces of energy. Larry, throw up on the fast part. Ounces of pressure. Ounces of pressure is moving from here, where he's going to try and hit, or here, over the side. You don't want to push it way over here, because then you have to move it all the way back. The truth is, the closer you're in here, the less you have to move this hand, the better the control you're going to have. Out here, you've got to reach way out and lock your balance up. So you want to be in here close. So only punches. Right here. Nice and close. That lets you move it again, back a couple of inches, and then down in the control area. So just ounces of pressure. And just let your hand kind of relax over the top. Okay. Boom. And it doesn't matter whether you hit here, here, here. But just slide it down here a little bit, okay? So this is just real soft. Try and keep your elbow not up here, but down here a little bit. Now it's going to be, until you're really comfortable, it's going to be kind of hard to keep it down too low. But for now, just try and remember to keep your elbow down and your hand soft. Again, one more time. And just capture it down like that. Okay? Everybody try and get that down. Now make sure when you pull over, okay, you're not just doing this. This doesn't work. This works. Do you see the difference? Is the first one, everybody's just coming, I'm blocking, I'm coming down. Don't put your hand down. Extend your arm out. This is ounces of pressure, but you want to be down at a 45 degree angle and out at a 45 degree angle. Because this locks up the balance. And that's the whole purpose of this exercise, besides protecting yourself, because there's a lot of things to do to protect yourself. But the real secret here is to lock up their balance without having to do so much force that it locks up yours. Because you need to be mobile. In the next second, you're going to be very mobile. The next thing I want to talk about is foot and ankle attacks. All right? Now, obviously, we're going to move in. I want to show you some things. All right. Dan, come here. Just grab it. Two hands. Just grab it. All right? Now, if he's got me, I can do all the foot. I want you to show what happens when I grab the foot. See? Look at his, the way his body moves back. Look at how much pain. You can see the... Just come around the camera. With, just by stepping on his foot in the right direction, I get that sort of reaction. Now, I want you to be very clear that I didn't step here. All right? I did not step straight across. In fact, he can push me off and keep me from doing this. All right? But coming across this way is much harder to do. Come up, and I can roll. I haven't touched him with the hand. All right? So what I'm doing is I'm coming, what's called a cross step. All right? Now I'm going to come off the point a little bit, so you're not going to see the reaction. But his foot's going to get sore real quickly. I'm on his toes, which is not exactly the point to hit. But even on the toes, I can cause a reaction by stepping down. If I get on the major point over here, and I'm just putting ounces of pressure, look at how he's doing. All right? Now we eliminated the hands in the last one. So when we get to this point in a second here, you're going to be in trouble. All right. In order to do this, you need to know exactly where to hit on the foot. Just stepping on the foot does not give you the reaction you want to do. There are, are a whole bunch of muscles on the foot that turn into the tendons, which drive the toes. If you look anatomically, I don't know if the camera can see it, but these all sort of terminate, all the small muscles terminate kind of a, a ridge, uh, kind of a half circle comes around here. Now, if you can follow this around, any place on this edge here, edge of these small muscles, if you catch them and you roll it, now it does not hurt much when you press your thumb on it. And the reason for that is you, you can feel your foot giving. But as you step down on the ground and you put pressure on it, you'll find that it hurts a little bit more. As somebody steps on them, of course, there's a lot more force. Now here I may need to make one thing perfectly clear. I've had people ask me whether this works when people have shoes. Oh yeah. <laughs> it works even better if you got shoes on. Even if you have bare feet and your opponent has shoes on, it works. Because as you notice, you can feel your foot trying to spread as you press down on it. You put somebody in shoes, the feet don't spread out like that. Even in tennis shoes, they don't spread out very well. Which means if they can't spread, those muscles can't take up the shock. The bones don't give away from it, which means you have a hard surface to compress the muscles against. And as we said in the pressure point um, film, 
the best thing that you can do is have a hard surface to roll a muscle against. So, Dan, I don't know if the camera can see the redness on his foot here, but right around here is the edge. If I take it and I roll it right here, see any of these points, they all make basically the same reaction. Now, granted, as I talked about in the first one, you can roll the tendons through here, but quite frankly, it takes a lot of time. We were talking about advanced things that don't take much time. So what I need you to do is I need you to find your opponent or your partner. I need you to find this ridge. Now it starts the best from about between the second and the third toe. It does go all the way over a little bit over the big toe, but I go between the second and third toe and follow from that point all the way around to just underneath the ankle bone, the lateral aspect, malleal out there. Okay? And you can just basically press on it and find those points. Now I want you to find them with your thumb, and then you'll be able to find them with your foot. And you want to press on, on your heel, uh, just like the outside edge. Divide your heel into quarters. Basically, the back quarter is exactly where you want to press on. And for right now, we're just going to step on it. So I want people to find those points. I want you to be very good at stepping on it. Now, for the reason, I want a couple things. When you step, you don't step like this. If you remember me talking and writing in the book about the proper way to walk is with a little bit of bend in your knees. Since this is a cross step, you should also be doing, making certain you're doing the same thing. Don't be tromping like a bull elephant. Yes, you want to come down on this guy with force, but you don't want to do it in such a way that you're off balance. You should bend both your knees and step down. So you're stepping across like that, okay? Just practice coming across, and you'll find that you're on automatically the outside posterior aspect of that heel. You come down on that corner of their foot, and you'll be right where you want to be. So I want you to practice both the walk, I want you to practice locating those points on the foot, and then I want you to practice your partner holding and you stepping across lightly on those foot. Now, do be careful. You keep beating on them. I need to tell everybody here, if you beat on these points enough, you can actually make your opponent dizzy. And that dizziness can last up to 24 hours. So if you find yourself, you know, somebody's been twerking on you, and you find yourself getting dizzy, or a little bit sick to your stomach, or even a little bit of ringing in your ears, it's all physiologically explained, and it will go away. I suggest that you just be cool so that it doesn't happen. But you can with the repeated trauma causes. So, so be nice to people. Otherwise, about two, three hours later, they're going to be sick to their stomach. All right? All right, practice a little, please. First five point. Climbing. 
And climbing is just like you're climbing a tree in a way. Larry, you know Now, I'm going to let the foot stop go for a second. All right, we're going to step, and I don't want you to worry about the foot. Just punch me. We did this, we did this. What I'm going to have you do now is called climbing. What you're going to do is take your other hand, and you're going to place it above the elbow. And this time, you're going to grab the pressure point. You don't have to be exactly, but you're definitely going to put your thumb in here. All right? You're going to lock it. The reason for this is so they can't come back with this elbow or come across. you still got a hand here. Now, this hand is trapped. They're down here right now. You already stepped across here, all right? Remember? One, two, climb. We're here. Now, I'm going to have you come up, put your hand, and I'm going to have you come up and grab either one of the two points we're going to talk about, which is called the sternocleidal master or the hair. Now, there's other points you can grab, but we're going to concentrate primarily on the SCM and the hair. So, what I'm going to have you do is work on climbing, okay? So, one, two, three, four, five. Now, don't be thinking you have to push him anyway. Really hard. In fact, very light pressure. One, two, three, four, five. Just tap, 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 tap. And you'll be up here. You are pulling yourself in at the same time. Okay? You don't want to be pushing them out of the way from you. So you have to chase him. Punch. Alright, I'm on top of you. Now, I own you. If you had a question that, look at his reaction. Just one finger. I own you. And I'm only in a minor form. So, I'm going to have you do the climb. But your last hand is going to wind up on the sternocleidal master. Now, most people know that if you look at the pressure point, you'll notice that it starts back here, behind the ear, goes all the way up to the front. Now, primarily I want you to catch it right about the middle or to the top. And I want you to hook it in one finger right there. And I want you to pull on in a downward reaction, kind of back and down, round and straight down like that, all right? Not up and around, but just straight down like that. And the reason why you're doing that, look at his balance. If I pull up, all right, bless me. Pull, he fights, but if I pull back through the force of the body, kind of down, just slightly backwards, but mostly down 45 degrees, right like that, right there. Look at his balance. His balance is gone. We just finished his balance again. He was over here first. We pulled him back this way. I have to literally, you know, keep, kind of keep him up. When I do much force, he's going to the ground. Okay? So I want to destroy the balance by pulling around and down. And there's almost nobody out there that can fight this. So we're going to do the climb. You're going to wind up with your last hand coming around the opposite side of the neck, hooking under that muscle, and pulling down. Not out and around, but kind of just slightly back and then down at 45 degrees. Slightly back, down. Back, kind of like towards your belt. Okay? Once you work on that. Make sure you have that down implicitly. You need to know that you don't necessarily have to do all five moves. You can actually do it in about four. You can actually cross over and use the other hand and do four. I like five because the extra taps has a tendency to confuse the brain. But they're not required. You can actually do it as little as three. One, two, and three if you want to. Okay? But I like the extra two because in the brain it's like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And it's changing and it gets the automatic alarm reaction from the climbing to the brain so they tighten up. As soon as they tighten up, it lets you control their balance more. Remember how we said tendons and ligaments get more sensitive as they tighten? Well, we're forcing them to tighten with this alarm reaction, which then makes it easier for us to drop. Okay? So you can get away with three moves. One, two, three. You might even get away with two if you do the one on the outside. But I think it's safer and faster, actually, if you do all five. But just make them very light. Don't make them super hard. Don't be knocking him over here to have to chase him. One, two, three, four, five. You own it. And then step. On the second one, by the, after you do your second one, we did one, two, then we started to move. So do your step in. Cross your foot. Don't step on their foot, but cross. Three, four, five. Excuse me. One finger works better for the sternocleidomastoid than two or three. The one point. I like my long finger. You can use your index, you can use your ring finger. It doesn't matter. One finger works better. Gives you better control. Let's the brain focus on the pain and try and get away from that one point of pain. Well, it does it in a way that locks or bounce. Too bad. Try not to be here when you put it. You want your hand on their shoulder, but you want them to come around to you. You don't want to go to them all the way, because then you just pull it backwards, and they can resist you. So when you do one, two, three, four, I'm looking at a step. I'm still in front of them, though. 
Five comes around, makes him come to me. All right? Don't go to him all the way. Just go make them come to you. Because at that point, they've lost their balance. If I go to him, pull back. Who's this? Who's this? Yep. See, I'm not making that circle. That's why I said you had to do a little bit of a circle. So you want to get stuck right there at their shoulder level. So when you come across, they have to turn around. Then they're not going to step away from you. When we add the next move in a second, which is going to be, as you can see, they're going down. But let me show you a little bit of fancy finesse on this stuff to keep the person who knows reverse chin off from nailing you in the mouth. Larry? Punch me. One, two, exactly like I said. Three, exactly like I said. Four, we put our hand up here. What I want you to do is to know that if you put your elbow in here, you can feel him trying to bring that hand up. There's nothing he can do because I've got that elbow. I've actually even got this finger on a pressure point. Check and roll. All right? So this elbow locked. As soon as this hand comes off here, one, two. This elbow locks. Not with a lot of force, but just a little bit of force. It protects you, which allows you to do this thing, and you still have the elbow. So I've actually got three points. One, two, three. We're going to add four right there in just a second. But right now, I want you to concentrate on the climb. Climbing is important. Don't be worried about getting there so fast, because you own this guy from this point on. Three, I own him. Four, I own him. Five, I'm going to educate him why he shouldn't let me own him. All right? So use your elbow. Always assume that the guy that you're training with is extremely good, extremely mean, and has more training than you thought. Think he does. So if you protect yourself, force things to happen, but protect yourself so he doesn't have an option. If he gets lucky or otherwise, it ain't going to matter. Assume that he's going to do the worst thing possible for you. Assume that, as I come here, that he's going to come up with that elbow. All right? If I bring my elbow here, he can't do it. So he's locked. Now, I got here, I own him. He ain't going nowhere. All right? So add the elbow lock in there. It's a bit of finesse. You can get away without doing it, but it might cost you your teeth sometimes. For those people that are trying to grab the neck, using your thumb, here. don't. Do not grab, take your point and grab both sides when you put your thumb in there. You notice it really doesn't work. Because as soon as you grab both sides, the whole muscle is tightened up and nothing happens. Lie back to penetration. But you grab one side, what's getting that thumb out of there, again, crane hand. Okay? Crane's important. If I grab the thumb, try and pull it, versus me. As soon as I lock it, it doesn't work. But I take the one hand thumb out of there, and suddenly I can pull him again. Why? Here, the camera wants to put my crane in, take my thumb, and bring it over to the same side. As soon as I lock my hand, thumb in there, he can resist me because the brain can now turn on the resistance in one direction. It knows you're trying to pull it. As soon as I take the thumb out of it, I own him again. Same force. So get that thumb into the crane. This position is just the one finger. The other hand's fingers can support it, but it's one finger and the thumb is locked in tight. Do not put your thumb around the neck. Don't do that. There's people who will try and do that. I mean, they're, they're good enough. You know, I get him here, he's going to bring that elbow right square in his mouth. But he can't do it. Try to hit with that elbow. There's just nothing he can do. You can feel it. You don't even have to pay attention. He gives him the chance to come over here. Now he ain't going to hit me with that elbow anymore. When you're, when you're doing the shoulder, Put your hand, don't just put your hand on your nice hand. Touch. Let them know that you're there. All right? One finger goes here, same roll. One finger. And then it sensitizes. So when I do this, it even takes less pressure. But if you just put your hand here, gee, I'm a nice guy. Why? Why not use that you're there? All right? You're right there on the edge of bone. You're right there on a lot of muscle. No matter where you hit, you're going to have an opportunity to dig that finger in. A nice little circular technique makes him know that you're at home. All right? So then you own it. Again, now I'm being a little bit exaggerated and out around because I'm trying to be nice. Truth is, I just come back straight to me. Again, the 45, straight to me. All right? I own him a lot better. Okay? We've already stepped over. You know, we got him down. And what I'm going to show you right now is what to do next. Is to take that elbow and just press it right down there, right to the ground. Okay? And we're going to try to be nice, but you want to fall forward. You know, one of these is going to have to fall this point because you're kind of losing your balance. The best thing to do is to fall into him. Now, 
I want you to know to be very careful. You know if you do this hard, they're going to smash their knee. They're liable to fracture their patella and possibly even rupture some of the tendons inside. So don't do this to your partner. Be real nice and gentle. I don't want to see anybody with fractured knees or, or ripped tendons. But the truth is on the street, the guy doesn't, can't walk, he can't attack you anymore. So come across, we hit him. This is the technique. We had our knees already bent. It's the same cross step. Bring him down. All the way to the ground. You only, okay? And that's the next step. Should be pretty obvious that's where we're going, and I want you to practice. Okay, come on up. Now, for right now, just step to the side of the foot. If I step on the foot, I'm going to own him a little bit. All right? Three, four, five. All right? Coming down. I'm, I'm going to let off from the angles. To be nice. Coming right down. Bring him all the way to the ground. He's going to fall with it. All right? Kwame Khan uses the concept of falling into your technique. This is another technique. You fall into it. Cross goes right behind the, the foot, and you fall into it and bring him down. But for the class, for your partners, make certain you let him down gently. So let go of the angles. Don't try and be perfect on all of them. Let them slop a little bit. <clears throat> get yourself down. Because if you do everything perfect, someone's going to get hurt. All right? So get off the foot and bring him to the ground gently. The thing you have to remember is you're not taking giga gigantic steps. If you take a step by step, we put everything together. One, two. Now don't slop this in. Get it over here. Three. Step right next to their foot. Okay? Too many people are stepping back so far already. Okay? Step right next to the foot because you would on the street you'd be stepping on their foot. So right here, step on. And then that's your first cross step. All right? All you're gonna do is continue to bend that knee and come up on it. All right? Three, four. Five. I own him. Now, if I just bring my other foot up, just bend my knee, I'm automatically in the right spot. I've been off his shoulder, not on his back, but off his shoulder the entire time. Come on, we'll kick it around for the camera one more time. Punch it. One, two, three. Hand goes here. Four. All right. As you come up on your foot, just, just come right up on it. You're right off the shoulder, just perfectly. <coughs> Hand comes up here. Look, your foot's right in exactly the right spot. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to hunt. Just up, boom, fall into it. If I fall forward, he's going down. All right? And that's exactly what you want to do. You'll notice that if you put your foot on top of their foot, or even right next to their foot, you're automatically in the right spot. For those people who are putting their foot out here or out here, that's why you're having trouble. You want to have your foot exactly like you step on it. So that's what we were doing. We are stepping on this point. For practice, I want you to step right next to it. But you should obviously even feel their foot, just the side of their foot right next to it. And automatically, see, you line it up. And in just a second, I'm going to show you a nice little cute little trick that you can do to kind of help things along. That if you get totally behind it, the angle to attack the knee is actually easier. And that's true. But in order to get behind them, you have to give up the attack of the foot. And I don't want to give up the attack of the foot. I mean, the guy attacking the he should know why this is a bad idea, and Payne is an excellent educator. So I want to provide for his education. All right. Now, I promised you a few things to enhance the quality, uh, shall we say, of stepping on the foot. Now, I'm going to try and be really nice because, well, he has, he's in my class. He may have to come back. But if you step on the foot, it hurts. But if you roll it, either way, just take it and roll your foot. It really, really makes a difference. Now, on top of that, you notice how your knee is close to their knee? See how that locks them up? If they're starting to do something with the other hand, just in case they do, try and move the other hand. All right, notice how it takes away their balance? Just by bobbling their knee, you already trap their leg, or I'm sorry, their foot. You can just bobble their knee. You still can come across to do yours like this. All right, bobble their knee. Again, come down, we own it. All right? But, so you've got two different ways to mess with them on top of everything I've taught you. One, of course, is just take and roll that foot. Now, I'm deliberately off. I'm on the toes. I'm not on the right point. So I'm rolling the foot. I'm going to show you from the camera on this one. And I am off. I want the people to look at to know that I'm deliberately coming off the point. But I'm rolling the foot either way. If I go on the point right there, I'm not going to show you. You can see their reaction. I can feel their reaction. I don't even have to look. But you just take and roll your foot. In fact, if you step on it as you roll in, as you come across,
across, you're automatically going to have a little bit of that roll. So you have a natural tendency to accelerate the pain, which means as you're coming in, this increased pain is going to totally take away the resistance for you to come in to enhance control. So until you actually put it all together once and seen how fast it's going to drop somebody, all right? And I'm still being awake because you notice I locked my knee. If I bent my knee and put full force on it, this in itself is enough to make him see stars and make him change his day, so to speak. So then I come up, four, five. And we own it, all right? That's climbing. One of the big things I'm seeing as I see people walking around is the tendency to lose that first angle. Everybody wants to get into the climbing, and that's really nice. But this is one of the technical exercises where it's imperative that you maintain some of the angles in the first one. All right? You can climb here, and that's all wonderful. But you haven't destroyed his balance. By having destroyed his balance, that is a weapon, that is a weapon, and you may wind up with a knee in your groin. Don't do that. You need to inca incapacitate that foot. The way to incapacitate that foot is this. All right? Even if you don't make him move down just a little bit, he is locked at that point for far enough to do this. But you've got to get this down at this angle. You don't have to have the thumb. You don't have to stay there long. But you need to do this. Just that fast, simple little jerk. Three, four, five. Otherwise, that hand's going to hit you. That's going to hit you. And on the street, you have to assume that the guy is good. Always assume that your point's good. So slow down. I know a lot of times, you know, people want to go, 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 go to the end point. But this is one of those things in martial arts where you need to work on the basics of doing it slow and doing it right. Get this down. This is one of the most important things that you can do. Because it leads to a lot of things. All right? Then go on. Three, four, five. But this is the most common mistake. Well, yeah, it's, it's okay, but it doesn't work very well. 90% of the time that I get that reaction is because people have not locked the pain withdrawal reflex, i.e. locking up the balance by doing this. When you do this, it magnifies the effect on everything else. It makes it so much safer, and it works so much smoother that you have time to be looking for the other guys around me. Because you notice I have a tendency to keep my eyes up. Now watch what I'm doing. Well, I'm actually watching what I'm doing, but I'm watching the environment. Because I know I own him. But I don't own him, or I don't own her, or I don't, and they may be coming in on me. All right? So we've got them. Now we're going to bring him all the way to the ground. All right? And this is the next step. What do you do at this point? At this point, you should basically have somebody down, and you come around, and you can take a finger. And I like fingers, and I'll bring fingers all, and I'll bring him all the way to the ground with a finger. Now, what I do with the finger, and I want to show you one more thing on pressure point, is you've all heard of small circle techniques, and they work really well. You take a small circle, so you, and you take a finger and you twist on it. I'm going to tell you that I try not to do that. Instead, I try to take one finger and put it between two fingers, and then squeeze it. Because notice the difference in reaction. Take the finger, one finger, resist me a little bit. All right? He's down, take the same force, two fingers, resist me. Resist me. Come on, stand. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, because I am squeezing this way and going down, the force, the pain is about four times stronger. So by using two fingers, I can bring him all the way to the ground and still keep him down there and watching his, the opponents. Again, third law, jerks have got friends down. All right? We've already smashed the knee on him. After we get the knee, we slide all the way down, grab fingers, I prefer the small two, and bring him to the ground. So I want you to do that. This is the next step on this level for the hands, and then we're going to move on to both feet. So you did all the way in. You have him here. Let him to the ground gently. Down. Slide your hand out and go down. You should have a broken knee, and you have control of him. Now you can move your fingers in any way you want to. All right? You can make him scream. You can, have, you can also bend him or at least and pull him over so he can't do anything. I can literally snap these fingers with ounces of pressure at this point. So you own this guy. You have a blockade against his friends coming in across you. And it's fast and easy. You see how easy once you have him down with pain, slide back out and own him again. Again, you're not staying there. The 
trick is, as I said earlier, to keep moving. You're in, and then you back out. So he was now targeting you because you were on his back. Now he's just taking a strike where his buddy was, because you're back out here again. You're moving. Again, your mobility is imperative against multiple attackers. It doesn't take much, but you've got to keep moving a couple of, just a couple of feet around moving. That allows you not to be hit, which is the object of the game. Um, some people have been asking the camera to see exactly how I grab the fingers. You, know? All right. you can take a finger and you can you know, twist on like I said. But what I suggest you do is you take your two fingers, put one finger in the middle, approximately what we call the PIP joints, just a little bit distal to that. <coughs> squeeze and put them down. All right? Now I'm squeezing in like this, and then I'm putting, bending backwards. But then just back is one thing. Back, squeeze in like this, and then down. You see the difference in reaction? All right? Let go one finger. Let go the other finger. He's not really going down. Go two fingers, and I own it. All right? Now you can actually take your thumb and put it underneath one and squeeze like this. So you can roll. But the trick is to squeeze together and then back. So again, you've got four different points rather than just one. So right around what they call a PIP joint, and it works for other fingers. You can do these two fingers here. You can, you know, doesn't matter which fingers, these two in the middle. But you're grabbing just distal to what they call a PIP joint. Put your finger right in there, thumb there finger there, and coming down. And then step back. Because you were here, you brought him down, slide your hand down, put your fingers in, and step back. That pulls him off balance again. All right? And I'm back, <coughs> controlling the environment. Or at least hopefully so. Force the fingers open, put your finger in between them. Right there. And then down. All right? One more time. Slide your hand down. Force your, force, you may have to pull the fingers open for a second, but I really doubt there's going to be any force there. Put your fingers in between theirs, squeeze them together, and then back. Again, it doesn't matter which fingers you put them in. Put your finger between them. All right? Now, you can put your index finger or your long finger or anything, but I prefer the index finger, the first finger here. The long finger does work. So does your ring finger. You know, I you can't use your small finger because there's nothing on the outside of it. But I prefer these two, the index, because your thumb has got a lot of force. And I can squeeze and then go down. All right? Does everybody have that clear now? Some of us tell me that they, and that is very appropriate statement, that they don't like going for fingers in the time because they have to pry the hand open. Go on down. I have to push you down. All right? Now, if you make a fist, and they just go for a wrist lock. And a wrist lock is fine, except that because it's such big tendons, it doesn't last very long. So what you do is you take your hand, Put it on the thumb like we did in the pressure point. See, I own him there. All right? Lock the thumb in. See the reaction? All right, I'm being nice because I let the other hand up. But if you lock that thumb in and press on it, I'm not going to do it. Relax. All right? So make a fist. Make a fist. The thumb is sticking out. Notice how the thumb is out? You know, most people don't punch like this. If they do, they break their own thumb. And they learn real quick. So they put the thumb out. Well, as soon as they put that thumb out, you, know, you got them to wrist lock you. You can just slide your, thumb, your palm, your hand down, and press in on that thumb. And I guarantee you hurt them just as much. They'll do just as many triple gainers or whatever you want. So just press that thumb, except that the thumb will go back in this way. All right? And like we talked about in the pressure points, you can even work on the nail to kind of enhance it a little bit. So you have the whole thumb that you can hurt, or you can get cute, nasty, whatever you want to call it, and work on the, on the thumbnail and actually cause them to pass out right in the spot. So you shouldn't know how to do this. Come down really fast and catch you to this point or catch the thumb. All right? But learn how to do that really fast and smooth. And learn both, just in case the guy's still waking up and he doesn't want to open up his fingers. Personally, you can always make him open up his fingers by, you know, you make it a fist. Just squeeze it in a little farther. He lets it open real quickly. Again, I've got the fingers. All right? So you can force their hand in, and they will, you know, I can bring him down. I didn't even take his finger. So it's the same kind of pressure point. But again, I'm going to refer back to the pressure points manual and teach you all that stuff. Because you don't have to limit yourself to just one pressure point. Once you have him down here, any of the resistant pressure points are the pressure points that last will work. Go off to triple gainers, bring him back, throw him into his partner, play ping pong, whatever. Practice those. Make sure you have a couple of them. Put your hand to hand down. <laughs> 
so far, I've taught you a lot of techniques, but I want you to look at the principles behind these techniques, which are basically climbing in. But they also apply to leg techniques. Again, you block inside to outside, and then you're basically going to climb up. Well, one of the things that most styles have in them is a quote-unquote axe block. Ain't no such thing as a block in katas. Well, there are, but there aren't, if you know what I mean. Um, they are designed for kicks that are designed, they're aimed from about your solar plex to just above your knee. Now, kicks below that are handled in a different way, but I'm going to show you what happens when somebody kicks at you that way. Um, I need a volunteer. Come on, you want the pump. <laughs> Alright, for the camera, I want you to do it slow so I can show. You just kick off your right leg, you could. What you do is you're going to block from inside to outside. Same as we did inside to outside before. Again, in, you're going to take, come across, and like that. Now, you notice we, we transfer the weight from going from one direction to the other direction. It's the same technique. Now, we're gonna, again, we're going to climb. But this time, we're going to climb right on top of their foot. And as we climb on top of their foot, as we step in, what's going to happen to him? So I want you to be careful. I'm showing you this so that you don't cause this person to. Because the natural problem is, well, for them, is they're going to break their ankle. As I step across and straighten up, I lock this ankle, and I push in this way. They're going to go out, and it's going to break. One, two, three, step, step in. All right, now you notice I was off, and I want everybody watching the tape, I want everybody here not to step on that ankle, but you're doing the same cross step. Cross. Now this one, you will. Remember last time we stepped on the outside? This one you're going to come across and you want to trap the top of the foot. It is not important that you hit the pressure point. What is important is that you lock it down so it doesn't have any give. And as you step forward, they're going. They're going off balance and you're going to hear this crunch. It will be a very sickening crunch because I guarantee you their ankle's in big trouble. So don't do it to your partners on the street. If you have to do it, you have to. So, to recap, one more time for you practice. Inside, outside, go ahead. One, hand comes over, hits right at the knee, circle block, should look like your axe block, all right? Step across, all right? This one should go right on top of their foot. So it's a big, deep step. But if you bend your knees, you don't have a problem with it. As you just drive forward, you're automatically pushing them down, okay? And I'm doing this intuitively, but I need to make certain that everybody understands you do not try and stop these kicks as they're coming in. Can you kick me one more time? If I try and stop this dead on, I'm going to get hurt. The whole purpose of the inside-outside block is not to stop the kick. Don't try and stop it. You're going to break something. The whole purpose is to deflect it, and you can let your body flow with it so that your force goes to the side. All right? So the force of the very powerful kick goes this way, and then you come over, and this does the control. But if you're trying to stop this thing dead with its kick like this, you're going to break your arm, you're going to hit the belly. It's not going to work. So deflect it sideways and down. And it does not take much to deflect a kick. It takes a lot of force to stop a kick. So don't try and stop this thing. Deflect it outward. And you see it rotate, all right? Thank you. Okay, now. Yeah. All right, sideways. Yeah, this time we'll capture it. <coughs> All right? Deflect the force outward so that you don't take it, so that your arm doesn't take it drain arm. That's to the side. Circle out. Circle again. Lock it. Step. Drive. Thank you. Kick against him. One. Some people are letting their leg come up here like this and say, well, I can't do anything because it won't hit. If you come down here, get us if you roll. So it isn't to hit down so much. It's as much the retraction that causes the knee to bend because of these tendons here. As I pull back this way, tight, doesn't do anything to the hip. But they roll back this way. Just like you do in the arm. You pull the tendons. It causes them to relax. It's an automatic reflex. It causes them to relax. So you're coming back this way. It's going to cause them to get in position. So it's, and you have that in all your techniques. All styles have got a technique in them like that. And that's the reason those are there. All right? And then step, boom, I have it. So don't worry if the hit doesn't work. Don't worry, well, it, it doesn't matter. Don't abandon it. It's the tension. Don't just, well, gee whiz, now what? 
push your pressure down and pull back because that's the real take. Is to come rub it against their tight. With your hand works better, and that, or hand and a fist, I should say, works much better. Okay? Thank you. Now, something you need to know and I need to clarify. For clarification, we've been showing people coming off their back foot just to make it easy for this claim. But the truth is, as I've told you, you never come off your back foot and kick forward. So, does that invalidate this technique? Absolutely not. Okay. Inside, outside, same technique, isn't it? It's exactly the same technique. Inside block, again, slope. In, out, all right? And same take. Step and push. I'll kick you here. One, two. He's down. And I didn't even have to put the ankle. But even if I step on this ankle and push forward, he's going to break. So I have a technique that works from about here up. Trouble is that on the street, a lot of your kicks by your people who really don't, or they don't kick up here. Where they kick? They kick here. They stomp here, they kick here. But that's exactly what they should be doing. So what do you do? Hurt? Nah. Nothing hurt. You should throw a kick. I mean, go slow initially so I can show you what to do. Now yeah, off your front foot. One, two. All right? Looks simple, but it's not. I'm going to slow it down real quick so you can see. Kick. And outside. What I want you to do is I want you to come from the outside and kick. Kick them in. In. Step on this one. All right? <laughs> now, this is different than what I said before. I always said come from the inside to the outside. That's a very good technique, and I'm going to address that in a minute. But for right now, unless you're trained in something like Iron Man or Iron Shirt tra training, I suggest that you do it from the outside to the inside. All right, so when you kick, the foot comes around, makes an angle. You kick, I'm sorry, a circle. You kick, and you pull them back this way. And then you drive this way. Now, if you want to go away from the ankle, it's fine. Personally, I catch the middle of the foot, and I drive right down, which, again, is going to cause that ankle to fracture. One, two. And a lot of techniques you've seen styles that have this technique. That's exactly what it's for. In fact, you'll notice in most of those techniques, the foot is angled. Now, I have said before, and I'll say again, every time this foot is angled, it's not a straight kick. It's for tendons and ligaments, and sometimes muscle edges. So that's what I'm doing. One, two, and down. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. It doesn't take a lot of force. It just takes that quick. One, two, down. All right? I want you to practice it. Get close enough to your opponent to make it real. Right now, me and Dan are outside reality limits a little bit. We'd be in here a little closer. One, two. All right? Start to kick. One, two. Now, head. You can actually take any point from the knee on down. That's your turn. Hit it, but right into the ground. But in class, be nice. Don't go all the way to the ground. Just be nice, okay? Okay, circle. Don't just block it out. Make it come this way a little bit. Make his balance out. Here, this way. See how he deflects the balance again? We talked about deflecting the balance of the arm. Again, we're deflecting the balance. And then when you go here, first he's got one way going that way. Now we're going that way. See? Yeah. One, one, bounce, bounce. We're taking him, basically making him do the splits in a way. Okay. Practice that. If you're not making your partner spin, if you're not making him lose his balance on these kicks, then you really haven't stayed with it long enough. Slow down, make him lose his balance, because if you don't, you put his leg right here, and it's coming to your groin, or it's coming on your foot. Assume that the guy knows as much as you do. So make him move his leg past your other leg. Don't just block it a little bit. Stay with it the whole time. And it helps if you take your back leg and you bend it a little bit, because otherwise you're standing up here like this. If you stay here, your balance is better. Hook it and move it this way, all right? Get that down. Make them move really well, and we're going to talk about going the other angles. The point of reference. <laughs> when, I'm going to do this real slow. A lot of people booty kick are coming up here. They're coming up too high up here. That makes their balance off the belt. If you kick low, you only have to slide about an inch or two, and you have the reaction you want to do. All right? So if you're kicking up here, you don't have enough balance, and you're going to feel uncomfortable. You're not going to feel really good. So do you kick and go low from about, like I said, from about mid-leg down. Slide
Slide it down. See the reaction? He's automatically going away from me. And then he can push. That tenant reaction of sliding down the leg automatically causes their knee to buckle. Makes it real easy to finish the push over. So if you get too high, they fall over, but you really never capture the ankle because you had to work too hard. So again, do your kick. One, not here, but here. Nice pull. Down low. Right here. Okay? Go low on that kick. Come back up here. Now, I said that unless you had some Iron Man train or something, you don't want to probably do an inside kick. An inside kick is done basically the same way. But I warn you, you have a tendency to cause a little bit of pain. Because what you're going to do, you're going to come across kicking it. You're going to go kick inside. You're going to take inside your bone, the shin bone, okay? Actually, the tibia, and you're going to smack it across here. Now, a good number of times, you're going to hit your tibia against their tibia. And that is bone against bone. And unless you have some conditioning to toughen that bone, it's going to hurt. It's going to cause a microfracture on you. Yes, it works. It works really well. Kick one. But he can feel it. I've had the training. That doesn't hurt me. But if you haven't, you know, one of these styles where they bang their legs against something and actually toughen it up, you're going to be very, very black and blue. Is it better than getting kicked in the groin or in the knee? Yeah, that's better. But otherwise, be real gentle or wear a pad. One, same technique. Down and then push. Now, if you're like my assistant instructor, you'd be real nasty to do the kick. One, and go right to the poison point, the femoral nerve. I warn you, that can paralyze the leg. But that's, a, that's also a blast kick. That's not a tip kick. All right? So you do an inside one. You've got an automatic femoral nerve, which will paralyze the leg. Or you can do the same technique again. Roll it down, come down on the foot, and then press. So where knee pad, or I'm sorry, leg pad, you're going to do this one. All right? Or... Do some conditioning if you want to do, but otherwise practice from the outside. Kick one. This is an actually a little bit of a faster kick. Again, whether you pull them back again the same way, pull them up, kick down, push. Make very certain on this one, if you do one, that your hands are up. Because you have to jam them in, or you're going to get a fist in the face. But it'll happen so fast, and their balance will be off so bad, that they're going to have very little power, if anything, to hit you. But you still want to keep your hands up and ruin your day. Catch, fire. Again, your knees are bent, so you have a good push, press, push position. Thank you. If you do this kick right, Larry, come here a second. Hold your leg up. You should not be kicking like this with your leg down. You should actually be kicking out at a 45 degree. Again, to deflect their force. Kick. All right. Now kick on the inside. All right. Like this. The leg comes out at 45 degrees, so their force goes this way. You don't want to stop it. You don't want it going into your leg. Not only is it more painful, but it doesn't help. You know, it stops their force. You want their force to continue to go this way. Again, it's a deflection. Not only because it hurts you less, but it also keeps their balance going, which is exactly what you want to do. Want to take it, slide it out, push. And that's the reaction you should see. Kick. All right. They should go that way. Kick, pull, and then back this way. Come down, about mid-leg, slide down, you're on the foot, your, your uh, knees are bent, push. You should hear that crunch. Shouldn't be your legs. All right, I want to make certain that you have these techniques and the theory. I want you to really remember the theory. But if you take the theory, you can see the flow to the center. The flow to get yourself moving so that you're not in a fixed target. The flow to be behind at his shoulder where he can't do anything. Not behind his back where he can smash you with his face or reestablish his balance and grab you and fall down. But actually at his shoulder where he's actually helpless. You're on top of his foot so you're trapping his balance and causing significant pain. And then you're moving again. After you've taken him to the ground, you're moving back up. So you're moving your position against your opponent can't attack you. It's these points of the theory that will keep you alive against multiple attackers, okay? That you continue to move, that you don't spend a horrendous amount of energy. Because these techniques are all designed to be real easy. Nobody spends a lot of energy performing these techniques. 
And that's important against multiple attackers because unless you spar against multiple attackers, you don't realize how tired you get so fast. It's just horrendous amounts of energy. And I consider myself to be in pretty good shape. One minute against three people, and I'm just panting. Okay. So, let everything in mind, we're going to go through. We're going to go through and get our recap. All right? Let's punch. Outside. All right? Outside. Oh, let's do this on the camera side. All right? Lock outside. Crap. Come in. Come down with the angle. That locks up the balance. All right? Footsteps in. At the same time, the footsteps in. Just grab right behind the angle. Don't get really hard. Just grab right there. Step. On. Four comes here. Elbow comes down. Lock up here. You're pulling down it. And then step here down. Okay? Go down. Try. Come back. Out, take the hand, come down. You can use any one of the techniques you have, all right? And just come in all in, all right? You can take away the weapon. There is, that's basically the whole concept for the hand taking. And we'll go through the foot in a second. There's one thing I do want to add. At this point in time, tuck your neck down. Tighten up your muscle. Now, if he does this, and I can't get a hold of sternal client, I'm after Because there are people who will do that. Just lock down really tight. There's still something you can do, which is grab the hair. And the hair now, the hair doesn't go through the resistance. If I try and pull the same angle as the sternal client mass, it doesn't work. But the hair go out mm -hmm. and around and down. So you have that option. And I want people to practice that just before we get out of here. You grab a handful of hair right above the ear. Again, I was delineating the pressure point stuff. Right there. You grab it, goes back, around, and, and the ankle. Kind of half, half circle, and then down. Go around again, and then back down again. Again, they step over and drive him down. You can blame this one on your buddy. You haven't got any hair. <laughs> All right. He hasn't got any hair. All right. So obviously you're not going to grab me. Now, yes, you can push your... But, you know, people think, well, I grab the ear up here. It doesn't really work. You're going to grab the ear. Grab the bottom of the ear, not the top of the ear. Grab the resistor. Top of the ear doesn't work very well. It just slips off. Bottom of the ear works a lot better. Notice the reaction? Or you can stick your finger in the ear. That even works better. Yeah. We have a technique called tighter. We come across, put both fingers in there, bring them down. Those people are, no, but it doesn't work if you don't put your finger in the ear. One finger in the ear, and you have your, if you want, you can grab below the ear and then inside, and now you really own the same technique down. So, that's another freebie in case the <laughs> friend here doesn't have any hair. Okay? Again, practice the hair, practice you. Don't be afraid of getting your finger in there and just kind of educate. Against the technique, you come up high, lock, trap, pull back. That's the pullback again, brings him down, step across, and fire. Okay, the low kick, strong leg, outside, oh, just kick some kicks for that. One, two, and down. All right? Try to be nice to him, I'll lose him the balance. Kick. One, two, all right, and then push. If I have the ankle, you're going to hear this crack. Inside kick, one, two, and down. Now, I have seen some people trying to think about what hand techniques I'm going to do. If you notice the way this should happen, you shouldn't need a hand technique. Yes, you keep your hands up in case you try to find it. But if you do this with right, okay, one, two, all right, and I'm off. But if you saw the reaction down, there should be no chance for them to put a significant hand technique on you, okay? So kick, drop, back, come down, five. And if they're not all the way down, finish with a push. Well, that ankle's trapped to the ground. They'll fracture. That crunch should signify that they're all over with. And you can turn your attention to somebody else. But the simplicity and the lack of energy required to do these things are the KISS rule, if you will, are what's going to make it function on the street. Because a lot of these techniques, you'll find that when you're stepping across, if you're the right distance, you're automatically, you don't have to look down. You don't have to find it. You stepped across, you're automatically in the right spot in your heel. If you step on the foot, you're automatically in the right spot on the foot. Come across, you're automatically in the right spot for your foot. You're automatically trained. You come step back, you're automatically in the right angle. Because these things happen automatically, you don't have to spend energy on them. Which means that your eyes can be scanning the guy that's trying to sneak up behind you. And they will. Notice the third law. Jerks have got friends. Okay? All right, I'm going to practice this last thing. Make sure you got the hair technique down. And then basically that's it. Again, remember the theory. If you want to change it, incorporate the fact that these things should be light techniques. Fast climbing, 
fast takings, using pressure points to drop in the ground, regain control, at all times being aware of the environment.